السلام علیکم آئی ہوپ آئی ایم کلیئرلی آڈیبل ٹو یور اوکے سو ایز وی نو دیٹ وی آر ٹاکنگ اباؤٹ دا فرسٹ اسلامک کمیونٹی اینڈ دا مین ایونٹس اینڈ دا مین دا مین ایونٹس آف دا لائفس آف دیز پرسنالٹیز اوکے دیز امپارٹنٹ پرسنالٹیز فرام دا پراپر پیس اپ آن ایپس لائف سو اور مین ٹارگیٹ اینڈ مین فوکس از آن دا امپارٹنٹ پرسنالٹیز فرام دا پرافٹس لائف ٹائم ٹھیک ہے اس کے اندر ہم نے بہت ساری ٹین بلیسٹ میں سے چار کو ڈسکس کیا وی ڈسکس وائفس دا ہری پرافٹ ٹھیک ہے اس کے علاوہ ادر امپارٹنٹ پرسنالٹیز ہم نے آئیڈینٹیفائی کی وی ڈسکس ٹرائبس اینڈ آلسو دا امیگرینٹس اینڈ دا ہیلپرس ان دا پریویس کلاس اوکے اینڈ وی ٹوڈے وی آر گوئنگ ٹو ڈسکس دا پرافٹ پیس اپان ایپس ڈاٹرس فرسٹ اینڈ دین وی ول ڈسکس دا لائفس آف دا پرافٹ پیس اپان ایپس گرینڈ سنس حسن اینڈ حسین رضی اللہ تعالیٰ عنہ so first of all our first aim and the first target for today's class is uh, to discuss the lives of the prophet's four daughters the prophet's four daughters okay they may ask you to write about the lives of the prophet peace upon him's descendants okay so descendants is also not difficult okay particularly we have more details about the prophet peace upon him's daughters so starting from here that uh, if you are asked to write about the prophet's four daughters charon ke bare mein likhe Sometimes they ask you to write about Prophet's daughter Fatima and any other daughter. Okay, so then Fatima and Zainab are written about Kulsum. I would recommend that they write about Zainab. I would recommend that they write about Zainab. And sometimes they ask you to write about Zainab and Fatima. Okay, so then Fatima and Zainab are written about Kulsum. I would recommend that they write about Zainab and Fatima. Okay, so then Fatima and Zainab are written about Kulsum. I would recommend that they write about Zainab and Fatima. Okay, so then Fatima and Zainab are written about Kulsum. I would recommend that they write about Zainab and Fatima. Okay, so then Fatima and Zainab are written about Kulsum. I would recommend that they write about Zainab and Fatima. Okay, so then Fatima and Zainab are written about Kulsum. I would recommend that they write about Zainab and Fatima. Okay, so then Fatima and Zainab are written about Kulsum. I would recommend that they write about Zainab and Fatima. Okay, so then Fatima and Zainab are written about Kulsum. I would recommend that they write about Zainab and Fatima. Okay, so then Fatima and Zainab are written about Kulsum. I would recommend that they write okay daughter okay she was the second child because eldest child was qasim and for Ka- because of qasim prophet was peace upon him was known as abul qasim okay zana was born in the fifth year of marriage and at the time at that time prophet peace upon him was 30 years old and zana was married to abul as abul as was uh, her cousin okay okay zana was married to abul as and you can mention that when prophet peace upon him received the first revelation zainab accepted islam zainab accepted the prophethood of the holy prophet muhammad peace be upon him and uh, she stayed with her husband prophet peace upon him migrated to uh, madina but she stayed behind okay she stayed behind along with uh, her husband later on the battle of uh, badr was fought in which her husband to participated and he fought in the battle of badr against the muslims Okay, Abul As fought against the Muslims and he was captured. So amongst the captives, he was amongst the captives and for the captives, Prophet peace upon him asked to pay the ransom money for their freedom. Okay, so the captives of Badr were asked to pay the ransom money for their freedom and to free her husband. Zainab sent her necklace. Okay, that necklace has been given to her by her mother, Khadija Raji Latala Anha. Okay, so the necklace that has been given to her was from Hazrat Khadija. So, he gave his husband's freedom to the Prophet Peace upon him, to his father's necklace. Okay, when the Prophet Peace upon him came in front of the necklace, the so Prophet Peace upon him, ko, it reminded him about Khadija Razi Allah Ta'ala. Anha. So, so uh, Abul As was sent to Makkah with a condition that he will send Zainab Razi Allah Ta'ala Anha to Madinah. Okay, on his return, she, uh, so Abul As made a promise and he was set free. Okay, so she returned to her father in Madina while her husband was freed and returned to Makkah. Upon returning money to the people of Makkah, he became Muslim and asked the Prophet to allow him to go back to Zainab. And she died a year, a year later. So after the Battle of Badr, he went back to Makkah. And there he had to pay some money of the Makkans from, because of his business. ٹھیک ہے انہوں نے وہ پیمنٹ کرنے کے بعد ہی آلسو جوائن دا ہولی پرافٹ پیز اپان ایم اینڈ آس ریکویسٹیڈ پرافٹ پیز اپان ایم ٹو لیٹ ہم اسٹے ود زین اب رضی اللہ تعالیٰ عنہ پرافٹ الاؤڈ اینڈ ہی کنسیڈر دا پریویس میرج ان ٹیکٹ اینڈ لیٹر آن آفٹر دا ری یونین زین اب رضی اللہ ڈائڈ آفٹر ایئر اوکے سو زین اب ڈائڈ ان ایٹ ایئر آف ہجرا ان ایٹ ایئر آف ہجرا زین اب رضی اللہ ڈائڈ اینڈ شی ہیڈ ٹو چلڈرن اوکے ٹو چلڈرن سن نیم علی and daughter and was ali okay 
that's all about zainab the first daughter the eldest daughter of the holy prophet peace be upon him okay next was we can talk about ruqayya radhiyallahu anha huh? okay ruqayya was born 3 years after zainab okay 3 years after zainab means we can say that um some uh, seven years or we can say seven years before the first revelation so three years younger to zainab and she was first married to utba abu lahab son okay when surah al lahab was revealed and abu lahab was cursed and abu since abu lahab uh, opposed the message of the holy prophet muhammad peace be upon him so at that time abu lahab forced his sons to divorce the prophet's daughters okay the two, two of the prophet's daughters ruqayya and umm kulsum were married to abu lahab sons utba and utaiba so in dono ki jo shuru ki early life hai same hai theek hai so they both were married to abu lahab sons and when abu lahab was cursed and surah al lahab was revealed to curse his action because he threw stone to the prophet peace be upon him cursing him when prophet was preaching at safa hill in open so at that time prophet was cursed by abu lahab so abu lahab uh later on was cursed through the quranic revelation theek hai to he forced his sons to divorce the prophet's daughters okay ye sari baatein bata ke fir bataye ki later on ruqayya was married to usman okay and they migrated to abyssinia okay first they migrated to abyssinia and then they migrated to madina okay they were in the first group that migrated to madina but in the first group they migrated to madina okay and prophet peace upon him remarked about their migration that this is the first couple migrated in the way of allah after ibrahim and his wife the first couple we can mention that usko jo hai uh because prophet peace upon him curse and that was the only curse that has been made by the prophet peace upon him because of his activities against the holy prophet peace upon him theek hai to ye itni detail ki zarurat nahi hai jaane mein bas you can just mention ke uh ruqayya was divorced and then she was married to usman and usman and ruqayya migrated to abyssinia and afterwards you can mention ke uh prophet ke remarks and when the rumors spread that the makkah had accepted islam at that time usman and his wife ruqayya returned to makkah and then they migrated to later on they migrated to madina there in madina usman started his business and his business flourished till persia he was a very famous merchant famous trader and at the time of the battle of badr usman was asked to stay back because usman's wife ruqayya the prophet's daughter was seriously ill okay that is why prophet peace upon him asked him to stay back and to look after her So Usman did not participate in the battle of Badr but he was considered amongst the participants and was given in the share in the spoils of war. Okay the couple had a son and his name was Abdullah. Okay they had a son and his name was Abdullah and Abdullah died at the age of 6 after the death of Ruqayya. Okay So that was about Ruqayya the prophet's second daughter. Umm Kulsum in ki initial life by same and after she was uh, that after she was divorced she stayed with the prophet muhammad peace be upon him along with her stepmother sauda okay she was she stayed with her stepmother sauda and later on she migrated to madina along with her stepmother hazrat sauda and there she was living with hazrat sauda radhiyallahu ta'ala anha theek hai wahin pe unke sath rehti thi hazrat sauda ke sath hi after the death of ruqayya okay prophet peace be upon him gave his second daughter umm kulsum in marriage of usman and that is why usman is known as dul nurain yahan pe khair likhne ki zarurat nahi hai waise bata raha hu usman mein hum bhi baat mention kar sakte hain usman is known as dul nurain so prophet married umm kulsum and he has given umm kulsum in marriage of usman radhi allah ta'ala anhu uh you can mention that um, she is also suffered by court and at shabi bi talib she stayed behind in makka and bata de ke the couple had no children theek hai is shaadi se inki koi aulad nahi thi and she died After Tabuk expedition in ninth year of Hijra, Umm Kulsum ki death hui hai. Likh le apne paas yahan pe likha wani hai ki Umm Kulsum died in ninth year of Hijra after the Tabuk expedition. When Prophet returned from Tabuk expedition, okay, he she died at that time. And upon her death, Prophet said if he had any other daughter, he would have given in marriage of Usman as Allah Taala ho. Okay, that was Umm Kulsum, Fatma, the youngest, the most beloved. daughter of the holy prophet peace upon him inke bare mein aapko detail mein likhna hai theek hai to she was the youngest daughter of the holy prophet muhammad peace upon him and you can mention the prophet's love and affection for her and the way the prophet peace upon him um 
रिमेंबर्ड हर ऑल द टाइम ओके सो फातिमा के बारे में आप डिटेल में लिखें ठीक है आपके आंसर में डिटेल आनी चाहिए ठीक है आपने बताया ना कि वैन शी वॉज बॉर्न ओके शी वॉज बॉर्न इन मक्का ओके सम सोर्सेज मैंशन दैट शी वॉज बॉर्न इन सिक्स जीरो फाइव ओके इट इट शोज दैट शी वॉज बॉर्न फाइव ईयर्स बिफोर द फर्स्ट रेवल्यूशन बिकॉज द फर्स्ट रेवल्यूशन वॉज रिवील टू द प्रॉफिट पीज अपॉन हिम इन सिक्स हंड्रेड टेन ओके सो शी वॉज बॉर्न इन सिक्स जीरो फाइव एंड शी ट्रेवल्ड विद हर स्टेप मदर हजरत सौदा रजी तहा टू मदीना ठीक है एंड देन इन द सेकेंड ईयर ऑफ हिजरा शी वॉज मैरिड टू हजरत अली रजी तहो ओके शी विटनेस द प्रोसिक्यूशन फेस बाई द प्रॉफिट पीस अपॉन इम इन मक्का एंड शी वॉज वेरी मच अपसेट एट द टाइम एंड शी यूज टू वॉश द प्रॉफिट पीस अपॉन इम्स हैड एंड क्लीन हिज हेयर ठीक है बिकॉज ऑफ द डस्ट एंड द इम्प्योरिटीज दैट हैज़ बीन थ्रोन बाई द एनिमीज ठीक है जो कुछ भी उन्होंने गंदगी गलाजत और ठीक है वंस एंड प्रॉफिट पीज अपॉन इम वॉज प्रेइंग इन मसद हराम एंड उकबा बिन अबी मोहित प्लेस द फिल्थ ऑफ द कैमल ऑन द प्रॉफिट पीज अपॉन इम्स बैक when fatma al salano got to know she rushed to the she rushed to masjid e haram and removed it from her father's bag praying allah okay and prophet peace upon him prayed to allah that allah sees the quraish okay ye it shows that she was very much uh, concerned about the prophet peace upon him her father she was married to ali in second year of hijra okay and prophet he was the prophet's cousin and they live in a very small house near the prophet muhammad peace upon him's mosque in madina the couple experienced much poverty okay like other immigrants that they were facing in madina they faced a poverty and later on she gave birth to her first son okay that was hazrat hasan radhi allah taala no we will talk about hazrat hasan and hussein in our today's class okay so she gave birth to her, her first son and prophet peace upon him named him al hasan the beautiful one okay and in the fourth year of hijra she gave birth to her second son and the prophet peace upon him named him hussein radhi allah taala no the little beautiful one Okay, she had also had two daughters, Zainab and Umm Kulthum. Okay, the two daughters were Zainab and Umm Kulthum. Talk about the Prophet's affection and love for his daughter. Okay, particularly the Prophet's uh, youngest daughter, Fatma Raja Allah Taala. And she was often near him at stressful moments. Okay, whenever the Prophet peace upon him was in stressful moment, she was there with the Holy Prophet peace upon him. She would wash his head when people in Mecca threw dirt on him. Okay, and when Uh, they uh, put the entrails of the camel or sheep on him uh, on the prophet peace be upon him while prophet was praying at kaaba she washed his clothes again in the battle of uhud okay a very stressful moment for the holy prophet peace upon him so at the time of the battle of uhud she tended his to his wounds okay and she washed the prophet's wounds and dressed him okay so it's a sign of love and respect for okay, you can mention Uh, that prophet peace upon him said to her that you are the highest of the women of the people of paradise theek hai fatima jannat ki auraton ki sardar hai theek hai according to the hadith of the holy prophet peace upon him she is the chief of the women in the paradise and in this hadith prophet said you are the highest of the women of the people of paradise except for maryam the daughter of imran okay uh another hadith that we quoted in khadija radhiyallahu anha that, that you can quote also over here that uh, that the noblest women are four the noblest women are four theek okay? hai you can write their name that maryam okay khadija uh, fatima and asiya okay these are the noblest women okay mention their names and you can mention that she was uh, very much upset at the time when prophet at the time of the prophet's illness okay and she was upset that he was dying but happy when prophet peace upon him told her that she would be joining him soon okay okay prophet peace upon him first informed her about his impending death okay and later on when prophet peace upon him informed her that she would be the first in his family to meet him in the hereafter okay of prophet peace upon him uh, stood for her respect whenever she visited him okay whenever she visited holy prophet peace upon him he would rise to welcome her okay when she came to see him in his last illness so he gave her his own chair to sit on okay prophet peace upon him very would very often give his own place to for uh, fatima radhiyallahu ta'ala anha to be seated over there okay. she was known for the title al zahra the shining one okay and uh we mentioned her high rank okay and uh, she is a role model for the muslim women 
okay and this is how we can mention that she died six months after the death of the holy prophet peace be upon him okay six five to six months after the death of the holy prophet ये सारी बातें हजरत फातिमा के बारे में आप डिटेल में अपने आंसर में लिखेंगे जब भी हजरत फातिमा का आंसर आएगा लिखने को ठीक है देन वी कैन टॉक अबाउट द प्रॉफिट पीस अपॉन हिम्स ग्रैंड सन्स हजरत हसन एंड हुसैन रजी तुम ओके राइट एन अकाउंट ऑफ द लाइफ ऑफ द प्रॉफिट पीस अपॉन हिम टू ग्रैंड सन्स अल हसन एंड अल हुसैन रजी तुम and this question came in 2009 it came in 2012 and again it was repeated in some recent year theek hai usse aap dekhe kis year mein kis year mein aaya hai wo theek hai to you have to write about their life during prophet's lifetime and also the throughout their complete life is required okay to write whenever there is a the question about hazrat hasan and hosain so hasan he was born in 3h okay they were the prophet grand sons okay hasan was born in madina in 3h it was 625 and was given his name by the holy prophet peace upon him himself okay and uh, you can mention dono ke bare mein ye baat aa sakti hai ki when he was born prophet peace upon him performed aqeeqa sacrifice to sheep okay to uh, sheep were sacrificed uh, okay as an aqeeqa and prophet peace upon him uh, donated uh, charity and he got their head shaved ठीक है दिस इज द नॉर्मल कस्टम एंड ट्रेडिशन इन द मुस्लिम फैमिलीज एंड दे फॉलो द प्रॉफिट पीस अपॉन हिम सन्ना दे फॉलो द प्रॉफिट पीस अपॉन हिम सन्ना इन दिस वे यू कैन गिव द डिटेल ओके इमोशतबा सो हसन रजी अल्लाह तआला अनहु दे बोथ वर नेम बाय द होली प्रॉफिट पीस अपॉन हिम दोनों ही के नाम प्रॉफिट ने रखे एंड हुसैन रजी अल्लाह तआला वाज बोर्न इन फोर्थ ईयर ऑफ हिजरा द नेक्स्ट ईयर ठीक है इन मदीना Okay, the fourth year of Hijra. You can mention their title that Hasan was called Shabbar. Okay, the beautiful one, the handsome one. Okay, and because of his appearance and style, because he resembled the Prophet, both his grandsons resembled the Prophet peace upon him a lot, and, and Prophet peace upon him showed his love and affection for his grandsons, and Prophet peace upon him would call them my sons. Okay, whenever he visited Fatma Rizi Allah Taala Anha. फातमाना के घर जाते हैं तो कहते हैं कि कॉल माय सन्स ठीक है मेरे बेटों को बुलाओ एंड देयर आर स्टोरीज ऑफ द प्रॉफिट मोहम्मद पीस अपॉन हिम अलाउंग हिम एंड हिज ब्रदर टू क्लाइम ऑन हिज बैक वाइल ही वाज प्रोस्ट्रेटिंग इन प्रेयर ओके एंड मेनी टाइम्स प्रॉफिट पीस अपॉन हिम इंटरप्टेड हिज सर्मन एंड ही केम डाउन फ्रॉम मेंबर टू पिक देम अप एंड व्हेन दे ट्रिप ओवर ओके एंड दे फेल प्रॉफिट पीस अपॉन हिम स्टॉप्ड हिज सर्मन एंड took them in the in his lap and he completed his sermon this shows his love and affection okay for his grandchildren you can say that uh, they um, spent their uh, early life uh, in the company of the holy prophet muhammad peace be upon him under his under his care and show you can identify the prophet's love and affection for them prophet peace be upon him called them that they are the the flowers of the paradise okay the flowers of the paradise they are also the leaders of the youth in the paradise so they spent their early life in the company of the holy prophet so they witnessed the prophet peace upon him receiving the revelations and they witnessed uh, they learned the quranic verses by heart okay and they got their uh, initially they received knowledge of the holy quran of the from the holy prophet peace upon him and after the death of the holy prophet they were brought up under the care of their father okay the city of knowledge fine they were brought up under his care okay they spent their life uh, and they participated in major events during the caliphate of abu bakar and umar and in the time of hazrat usman rizi allah taala anhu when usman rizi allah taala anhu was besieged in his house ali rizi allah taala anhu sent his both sons hasan and husain to protect usman rizi allah taala anhu okay they protected usman rizi allah taala anhu and they allowed food to be uh, delivered to usman rizi allah taala as he was besieged in his house uh, during the caliphate of hazrat ali rizi allah taala they participated they took active part because they were full of youth they were young at the time and they took active part in the major events of the caliphate of ali rizi allah taala they took part in the battle of camel and also the battle of siffin okay from their father's side uh, at the time of the battle of camel uh, prophet peace oh sorry 
Ali رضی اللہ عنہ sent his son Hassan to Kufa and Hassan رضی اللہ عنہ successfully managed an army from Kufa. He successfully managed an army from Kufa and uh, marched towards Basra. He marched towards Basra okay, with the army and he himself participated in the Battle of Camel and Sifin. Okay, later on, you can mention that after the death of Hazrat Ali رضی اللہ عنہ, Hassan was elected and appointed as a caliph. Okay, and he was elected as a caliph and but later on he realized that it will be difficult for him to continue because he faced a lot of opposition. So he decided to resign in favor of Hazrat Muawiya and this is how the Prophet peace upon him's prophecy got fulfilled. His prophecy got fulfilled that Prophet peace upon him has said about him that this is my son and he would be a source of reconciliation between the two warring factions of my ummah. Okay. This is my son and he, he would be a source of reconciliation between two warring factions of my Ummah. And we know that the wars, civil wars were fought between Hazrat Ali and Hazrat Muawiyah, Banu Hashim and Banu Umayyah. So this is how through Hazrat Hassan Razi Anhu, this rivalry came to an end. Okay, and it stopped. Okay, Muawiyah Razi Anhu accepted all the conditions. Okay, and he gave him a clean sheet, okay, a clean page with his sign and official stamp that Hassan Rizlatulano can write any terms, any conditions that he wants to be agreed. Okay, so he resigned in on the basis of those terms and conditions, okay, from the post of Khilafat. And this is how later on Muawiyah was accepted. Muawiyah Rizlatulano accepted all his conditions and he remained undisputed caliph from 41 AH till 60 AH for 20 years. Okay. Hassan Rizal Talanho, it was said that he was poisoned to death in 50 AH and he was buried in Jannat al -Baki. Okay, these are the major facts that you can mention in your answer. You can go on for further details, okay, and you can write whatever information and whatever things and information is relevant. Okay, so you can write all relevant details about your life in your answer. Mostly you have seen that Hassan and Hussein, both the personalities have been asked in a same question. So you have to write Hazrat Hussain Rizal Talano in detail. Shuru ki to life by same hai, wo humne shuru mein discuss kar di. Okay, we discuss his, uh, the early life of both of them, thikhe, together, shuru mein discuss ho chuka. Ab yahan pe aap hi batayenge ki after the death of Muawiyah Rizal Talano, before his death, he has uh, appointed his son Yazid as his successor and he started, he has started taking oath from the people to be, to nominate him as his successor. Many senior companions were against this appointment and this was not accepted okay, by many of the senior companions of the Holy Prophet peace be upon him. So Hazrat Hussain Rizalatlanhu sensed the pressure at the time. So due to the pressure of the governor of Medina for the pledge on Yazid's hand, so he went to Makkah, so considering that there he would be safe. So when he reached Makkah, he received letters from the people of Kufa, okay, th those who sent letters to him and started inviting him to uh, come over to Kufa and uh, they are ready to accept him and they are ready to appoint him as their ruler as a as a caliph so he decided so he sent uh, Muslim bin Akil his uh, cousin to know the condition there in Kufa okay, Muslim bin Akil was sent to Kufa by him to know the real condition the, the real ground there so Muslim bin Akil was welcomed and he received a uh, welcoming hand from the people of Kufa. So he sent a positive feedback to Hazrat Hussain Rizalatalano about the people of Kufa. So Hussain Rizalatalano left for Kufa with few of his supporters and family members, though he was advised to struggle from Makkah or at least not to take his family there. Okay. So at that time, uh, he decided to proceed with his family and his supporters to the to the Kufa. Um, the people of Kufa, they, they were against the Umayyad ruler and against they were ag they were not willing to support the Umayyad governor. So, Hussain Rizilat Al-Anhu cautiously sent his cousin Muslim in Akil to find a situation there. So, Muslim detected widespread support amongst the Kufan and he wrote a letter to encourage Hussain Rizilat Al-Anhu to come. But immediately afterwards, Muslim sent the letter, he was captured. So after Muslim sent a letter to Hazrat Hussain Rizalatalanhu, he was captured by the Umayyad governor of Basra and was killed. Okay, strict measures have been taken against Hussain Rizalatalanhu's supporters in Kufa, 
and they were terrified. Okay, strict actions were taken. In the meantime, Hussein al Talanu left Medina for Makkah and then from Makkah to initially he went from Medina to Makkah for Hajj in the month of Rajab. Okay, and later on on 8th of Zilhaj, okay, in September, he led by he himself led the, his followers and his supporters. Okay, and he started his journey towards Kufa. And on the way, he came to know about the um, the death of Hazrat uh, Muslim bin Akil, okay, and what the governor has done with the supporters of Hussain uh, Rizal Anhu. Okay, so Yazid appointed Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad as the new governor of Kufa when he noticed the rebellion there in Kufa. Okay, the people of Kufa could rebel, and Muslim was deceased and he was killed. And on while Hussain Rizal Anhu was marching towards uh, Kufa, he received the news of the death of his cousin Muslim. He, but he decided to resume his journey, con to continue his journey, because he decided that when he has made an intention, now he has to put his trust in Allah Almighty. Okay, so he thought that when he had left the path of the path, he must continue and he should put his trust in Allah. Okay? So when uh, he got to know that uh, that he would be arrested or he would be killed and the army has been sent okay from the governor of kufa and basra and from different areas okay and that he would be killed so it uh, strengthened it strengthened his courage and on second of muharram hussain zatlano pitched his camp at karbala in the in the desert near kufa so the umayyad troops they surrounded the camp and they prevented anyone from fetching water from the stream of the river Euphrates, okay, that was some distance away. So negotiations were conducted between the two sides for some days, but without any result. So on the 10th of Muharram, 60, 61 age, this battle was fought, okay, and the battle began between the 72 supporters of Hazrat Hussain and 4,000 strong Umayyad army. So at first there were small skirmishes, okay, and later on, the because the army did not attack in force, but as the day wore on. Hussain Rizlatanano's supporters were killed one by one and his camp was set on fire and finally, with only a handful of his supporters, mainly women and children, left alive, okay, he was, he made his uh, uh, way to the river to get water, but he was surrounded and he resisted and he fought courageously, okay, and he died in the way of Allah, he sacrificed his, his life in the way of Allah, okay, and this is known as the Battle of Karbala, which was fought on the 10th of Muharram. And he preferred to sacrifice his life and he preferred to um, uh, sacrifice his family, okay, on his on the religion of his grandfather. And he, uh, not, he was not willing to accept the unjust or uh, ruler at that time. And this is how we can say that Hussain Rizal Tananhu uh, has such a high regard and such a high respect for amongst, uh, in the heart of all the Muslims and such a great sympathy for him okay so he set up the rules and the principles okay the decision to die for his principles rather than surrender okay is seen as a sacrifice to revive the true religion of his grandfather so this is an example that he has taught muslims to resist against the unjust rule and this is how we can say that he was martyred okay, he achieved martyrdom and some uh, we can say that because he has also been given title by the people as the chief of the martyr Although the chief of the martyr title has been given by the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, to Hazrat Hamza Rajalatalanho. This is how, uh, this is such a great, uh, can, we can say that it's a great sacrifice, okay, from the, the family of the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, to uphold Islam. Okay, that's all about the Prophet, peace be upon him's grandsons. So I hope that these personalities are also clear and you are not facing any difficulty one more thing that we can discuss in our today's class is about the some of the stripe we discussed stripes in the previous class but today we need to just uh, have a quick review of these stripes in our today's class let me share another file with you okay so stripes of the divine revelation The scribe, okay, the Quran was revealed to the Prophet and it was written, it was revealed through the angel Jibrail and it was written by the 
by the scribes of the divine revelation. Okay, whenever Prophet received the revelation, he dictated it and he instructed his companions to write it down. Okay, there were about 40 companions of the Holy Prophet, peace upon him, who wrote down these verses of the Quran. Okay, amongst the, the scribes, the, the first four were the rightly guided caliphs, Abu Bakr, Umar, Usman, and Ali, and we know the life, we know their life. Okay, the, one of the most prominent scribe was Zaid bin Sabit. Besides Zaid bin Sabit, there was Abdullah bin Masood and Ubay bin Kaab. Okay, we will quickly see the main uh, events and the main details of these scribes of the divine revelation. That Zaid bin Sabit Anhu was from Ansar and he was from Khazraj tribe and he accepted Islam at the age of 13. You must mention that he accepted Islam at the very early age when Prophet Bisa Pani migrated to Medina. He was eager to participate in Badr and Uhad but was not allowed because of his young age. Okay, Zaid was 16 when he was allowed to participate in the Battle of Trench. Okay, the first battle in which he participated to fight, it was the Battle of Trench. Zaid used to recite surahs to the Holy Prophet peace upon him. Okay, and Prophet peace upon him uh, uh, commanded him how to write and how to write in a proper way and how to write the letters and uh, figure them properly. He, okay, and he learned the language of the Jews also and he, he recited the Holy Quran to the Prophet Muhammad peace upon him. Prophet peace upon him appointed Zaid bin Sabit to write a divine revelation and he wrote it during and after the lifetime of the Holy Prophet. After the death of the Holy Prophet, he was ordered by Abu Bakr and Umar to compile the Quran and he prepared a manuscript from with the help of his own memory and with the help of the written pieces that were written under the Prophet peace upon him supervision and also with the help of the copies that were made by the other companions of the Holy Prophet peace be upon him and with the help of the memory of the other companions. So this is how the copy he has prepared it remained with Abu Bakr throughout his Khilafat and later on after his death it was passed to Umar Anhu, and after Umar it was passed to Umar's daughter Hafsa Razilatalan and this copy came to be known as Musaf al Hafsa. During the Caliphate of Usman, Zaid bin Sabit was appointed again by Usman Anhu, along with three other people from Quraysh to make a standard copy of the Holy Quran on the accent of Quraysh. Okay, so Zaid bin Sabit was again appointed and, and he has again interested to compile the Quran and make copies of it in the Qurayshi dialect. Okay, since it was revealed in that dialect. So when Zaid bin Sabit died, it was such a great loss for the Muslim Ummah at the time that Abu Huraira remarked on his death that today the scholar of this Ummah has died. Okay, today the scholar of this Ummah has died. You can quote this in your answer when you talk about Zaid bin Sabit. biographical account life services as a scribe likhne ke liye pucha jayega to then you can write this statement but in the compilation of quran there is no need to write these statements another was abdullah bin masood radhiyallahu and he was a slave and he used to tend the flock of his master once the prophet and abu bakr came from a journey and were thirsty and they asked him to give some milk okay but they he refused saying that he is not the owner these these goats and sheep are not of okay, his so he was impressed by the prophet peace upon him and accepted islam he was impressed by the miracle of the Holy Prophet, peace upon him. The miracle was that the goat, which uh, was unable to give milk, started giving milk. Okay, so uh, he was known as the Prophet, the, the one who carried the Prophet, peace upon him, staff and his miswak. Okay, he was known by the title Sahib of Sivake Vannalan. That Prophet, peace of, he used to carry the, he used to carry the uh, stick and also the brush of the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him. Okay, you can write about these details, these things in your answer. So, uh, Abdullah bin Masood was known for this title. Okay, you can write it in Arabic. Screen is not shared. What happened to screen? I made a the screen properly shared here. Okay, sir. Rahim, is there any problem? Okay, fine. So I was telling you that he was known as Sahib Sivake Van Nalain. Okay, he received special training of the Quran 
from the prophet's house because he used to uh, stay with the holy prophet peace be upon him and many times people were confused and they uh, they thought that he is uh, they they considered and they thought that he is the one of the family member he he was considered the fam one of the family member of the holy prophet muhammad peace be upon him okay he was the one who recited the holy quran openly in masjid e haram in makkah okay in makkah he recited he was the first one to recite the holy quran in open okay so we have some more details about uh, uh, abdullah bin masud radhi allah ta'ala anhu uh, he was the closest to the prophet peace upon him in character you can mention it in your answer closest to the holy prophet peace upon him in character okay he adopted his manner and he followed his every trait until it was said of him ke bare mein kaha jata tha ke wo har cheez mein prophet ko bilkul har cheez mein copy karte the theek hai and he was sent by hazrat umar radhi allahu anhu to kufa also you can even mention that he was the first muslim to openly recite quran and he recited surah rahman before the pagans of makka on this quraish beat him but he withstood their beating and did not care about the tortures with the quraish inflicted upon him for such a daring act okay so he was the one who recited in openly okay the prophet peace upon him said about him that whoever likes to recite quran as fresh as fresh means that is accurately as it was revealed let him recite in the tray in means in the accent in the way it is recited by the son of umme ab okay that is abdullah bin masud son of umme ab okay the mother was known as umme ab so he should recite it in the accent in the way of abdullah bin masud radhi allah ta'ala anhu okay mention these things and answer he was the one who killed abu jahal in the battle of badr umar appointed him as 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 an administrator of kufa okay during his rule and you can write about him that he is full of knowledge okay chronic revelation abu musa ashari radhi allah anhu ne unke bare mein jo baat kahi that could also be quoted jo yaad reh sake usko quote kar dena like do not ask people like me about anything matlab mujh jaise bande se ilm ke bare mein aur knowledge ke bare mein na poocho as long as you have this man of deep knowledge among you as long as you have abdullah bin masud with you theek hai to unhone ye baat unko kahi theek hai he lived in the time of the caliphate of usman and the caliph visited him on his death bed and offered some payment and some money for his daughters theek hai unke liye ek wazifa aur ek scholarship unke liye baitul mal se fix kar diya jaye unhone usko accept karne se refuse kar diya unhone kaha ke i have he has he had taught his daughter surah al waqia and because the one who recites surah waqia daily he he don't have to uh, be very much concerned about uh, hunger theek hai usko bhook aur faqi ki koi zarurat aur koi isse ke masail nahi ho sakte theek hai to unhone kaha ki i don't need any help and support from baitul mal or from any other person because i had taught my daughters the word surah al waqia and they are habitual of recite, reciting it daily so there is no need of help and support allah is there to help and support them okay so that was about abdullah bin masud radhi allah ta'ala anhu another companion and strive for divine revelation is ubay bin kaab radhi allah ta'ala anhu okay so ubay bin kaab for him you can mention that he was from madina and he was from fazrish tribe and he came in the plains of hakaba and that time he accepted islam and he was one of the senior scribe of the holy prophet peace be upon him in madina he was also the best reciter of the holy quran and according to one uh, hadith he prophet himself asked him to recite quran okay prophet peace be upon him asked him to recite quran okay prophet peace be upon him told him that allah has commanded me to listen quran from ubay bin kaab so he was very much pleased that whether allah has mentioned me my by name so prophet peace be upon him said yes so he is considered one of the best reciter of my umma the one of the, the best reciter of my, for my umma is ubay ubay bin kaab according to the hadith prophet has commanded his followers to learn quran from four okay learn quran from four persons okay rahim i will share these notes to you okay learn quran from four persons okay they are Ab- abdullah ibn masud radhi allah ta'ala anhu okay another one was salim and salim was the one who was killed in the battle of yamama he died in the battle of yamama and because of which hazrat umar radhi allah ta'ala anhu was very much concerned about uh, the holy quran that quran would be lost and third one was ubay bin kaab and fourth one is muaz ibn jabal okay it is muaz ibn jabal theek hai muaz ibn jabal radhi allah ta'ala anhu was the, this you can write 
प्लीज नेम्स इनको याद भी रखें यू कैन कोड दिस है दीज यस आई विल शेयर दिस नोट्स विद यू पीपल सो ही इज कंसिडर्ड एज द बेस्ट रिसाइटर ऑफ द होली कुरान ओके एंड ही वॉज अपॉइंटेड बाई हजरत उमर रजी तैन हो ड्यूरिंग हिज खिलाफत टू लीड द मुस्लिम्स इन द कॉन्ग्रीगेशनल प्रेयर ऑफ तरावी वैन उमर रजी तैन हो स्टार्टेड एंड इनिशिएटेड द सिस्टम ऑफ तरावी एट द टाइम ही हैज़ बीन अपॉइंटेड बाय हजरत उमर टू लीड द मुस्लिम्स इन द कॉन्ग्रीगेशनल प्रेयर ऑफ तरावी ओके ट्वेंटी रखा तरावी प्रेयर द बेस्ट रिसाइटर ऑफ माई उमर इज अवेब बिन काब एंड ही डाइड इन ट्वेंटी नाइन ए एच That's all about the scribes. Okay, so these are the prominent scribes: Zaid bin Sabit, Ubay bin Kaab, and Abdullah bin Masood رضي الله تعالى عنهم. With these details, our topic related to the first Islamic community is complete. Okay, I hope these things are clear. You have to particularly focus on these important personalities. इसके अलावा फिर आप जो आपको नजर आता है जैसे जो other personalities आती हैं मैंने आपको identify की हुई हैं. I will again share uh, the names. of such personalities like you know about abu talib abdul muttalib you know now you know about uh, uh, salman farsi okay salman farsi is also one of the important i will share aur aapki jo book hai hamad ibn nishad ki uske andar bhi jo salman farsi se related detail hai aap usko wahan se ek dafa dekh le salman farsi rizal salano ke bare mein ek dafa paper mein bhi aaya hua hai ke how he uh, came over to madina and the way he suffered a lot in this in his journey and how he accepted islam and he noticed all the prophetic signs in the holy prophet peace upon him that has been told to him by a christian monk okay priest and he suffered a lot in the way of allah and he was the one who gave the idea of digging the trench in the battle of trench as the persian way of and strategy fine so us salman ke bare mein prophet ne kaha salman is one of our household okay once there was a dispute between muhajirin and ansar and each one were, were were claiming that salman is one of them theek hai salman is from ansar and other other one claiming that salman is from muhajirin so at that time prophet peace upon him said that salman is neither a muhajir nor an ansar salman is one of our household okay salman whenever salman was asked to introduce himself so he would say salman uh, that i am salman i am son of islam and from the children of आदम अलैहिस्सलाम ठीक है सलमान इज नोन दैट दैट ही हैज ट्रांसलेटेड कुरान सम ऑफ द पार्ट ऑफ द सम ऑफ द पोर्शन ऑफ कुरान इन अ फॉरेन लैंग्वेज दैट इज पर्शिया पर्शियन लैंग्वेज ओके सो सलमान इज द वन हु वाज एक्सपर्ट इन एंड हु वाज वेरी वेल अवेयर अबाउट द मेजर टीचिंग्स ऑफ द थ्री रिलीजन ही वाज अ जोरेस्ट्रियन लेटर ऑन ही एक्सेप्टेड क्रिश्चियनिटी एंड फाइनली ही वाज अ मुस्लिम ठीक है तो तीनों रिलीजन के बारे में उनको कंप्लीट डिटेल्स थी और उनके पास इंफॉर्मेशन थी ठीक है तो ये सारी हमारी पर्सनालिटीज हो गई ठीक है आई होप दिस थिंग्स आर क्लियर इफ यू हैव एनी डिफिकल्टी यू कैन आस्क ओके एनीथिंग एनी क्वेश्चंस 